We come back now to Psalm 137 to our fourth lesson. We are looking at the subject by the rivers of Babylon. We especially want to look in this fourth uh, lesson on verse 7 of Psalm 137. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. So we see that the people of Israel who were suffering in Babylon in the captivity were asking God to remember something that evidently God had brought on their hearts and minds to remember. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. That's what they wanted him to remember. And uh, we want to find out who they are. Now, you're going to have to find the book uh, of Obadiah. The book of Obadiah. It's after the book of Amos. It only has 21 verses. It's just that one chapter. Amos, Obadiah, and then Jonah and Micah. So right along in there in the Old Testament, the book of Obadiah. Why are we going to the book of Obadiah? Because we want to find out what all this is about, about asking God to remember Edom. Obadiah. I don't have to say chapter because there's only one chapter. Verses 1 and 2. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning whom? Edom. Here we are learning about Edom. This is the vision of Obadiah. This was all the man was called to do. To remember Edom. To set it forth what God's mind was concerning Edom. So the people in the Babylonian captivity that was penning this Psalm 137 in verse number 7, remember Edom, O God. <clears throat> they were led by the Holy Spirit, that the same Spirit that called Obadiah to be a prophet and given but one message. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, Ye have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in Babylon, Babylon, excuse me, battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Verse 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? So we're bringing up Esau. Look at verse 8. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? So Edom is Esau and his family. So the Edomites were those who were derived from Esau. And we see God is saying to, uh, being asked to remember them. Now, in Deuteronomy, we've got to get this verse in. Deuteronomy chapter 23. And we can see how this thing started out. And in Psalm 137 verse 7, and in the entire book of Obadiah, we find how it wound up. And we know that the scriptures say, it was not an enemy that took counsel against me. It was my own familiar friend that we walked up to the house of God together. You may start out with somebody that seems to be co-equal with you as far as their love of God. But before it's over with, you'll find out they were not of God at all. Judas didn't seem to be anybody that was a problem to the rest of the disciples. When Jesus said, or have not I chosen you, but one of you is a de of the devil? The none of, no other disciple said, is it I? Uh, excuse me. All the other disciples said, is it I? That none of them did say, is it Judas? They couldn't pick him out. So you be careful with this. But this is how it started. 
Deuteronomy 23, 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. That's how it started out. Excuse me a minute. Air conditioning. Makes me sneeze. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an, Egy an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. So we see that God is telling them that the Edomites uh, were, th were their brothers, that is, as far as Jacob and Esau were, were concerned. So it starts out that God says, I need to protect the Edomites. But yet in our uh, study, we're coming to the end of this thing and how it all winds up. So in Psalm 137 and verse 7, uh, God is called on to, uh, to remember Edom for what they did and how they w caused Israel to wind up in Babylonian captivity. Now, he says, remember. You better be careful, dear soul. God has a very good memory. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse number 23. 1 Samuel 15 and verse 23. Excuse me, verse 2 and 3. 1 Samuel 15. Samuel also said unto Saul, this is verse 1, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling ox and sheep, camel and ass. Now we're talking about Amalek and the Amalekites. I know we've switched over from uh, talking uh, about uh, Edom, but I want to, we're not crossing over and leaving our subject. We're talking about the memory of God. And God remembered Amalek in that when, they, when Israel was coming out of Egypt, the Amalekites didn't help them. They didn't do anything for them. He is going to remember them. Hosea, the book of Hosea, chapter 7. Hosea, Joel, and Amos, and so forth. Hosea, chapter 7. Verse number one. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered, and the wickedness of Samaria, for they committed falsehood. And the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth without. And they considered not in their hearts that I remembered all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. So these people praying God remember uh, Edom was not contrary to God's mind and will. In fact, it was God's mind and will for Israel in bondage to call on God to remember them. So he says, they don't consider in their hearts that I remember their wickedness. Their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. Be sure your sins will find you out. And remember that there was a time when the entire human race, their imaginations was only evil continuously. But what were they doing? Eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and having a big old time and forgot all about God. And then sudden destruction came upon them as, as a thief in the night. The flood came and took them all away. You be careful. God remembers, and his judgment in remembering these things is very swift. Zechariah, Zechariah, chapter 12. Zechariah, chapter 12, <clears throat> verse 8. Zechariah 12, 8. 
In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. God is going to remember Israel, is going to come back to them, and is going to make those people that were feeble, that others didn't mind jumping on them with both feet, didn't mind to kick them while they were down. They, were, they had their harps hung on the willows, the weeping willows. They were weeping and they were under the afflictions of God. And the others said, well, because they were envious of them, let's take this opportunity to destroy them. And God said, those feeble ones that you thought was good to be able to jump on them and destroy them, I'm going to make them as strong as David, who's a man after my own heart. And the house of David shall be as God. The individual shall be as David, and the whole house of David will be like God himself. Can you believe this? This is the Bible. Zechariah 12, 8. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come after Jerusalem. Be careful. Almighty God made himself in the fashion of a man, although he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, and took upon himself the form of a man, a servant, and became obedient even to death. That's when the devil came after him. And when Jesus Christ was made in his weakest place, in his weakest hour, he told the devil in, the, in this gang, he said, this is your hour and the power of darkness. But be careful because you better give it your best shot. Through death, I'm going to destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. And dear soul, you may take opportunity to go after a man while the Lord has caused him to be brought down. God may have blinded him, and he may have done some things that are totally contrary to his character, and you went after him. Be careful, because God's going to turn that thing around. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And in that day, he that, is a, that, is, that was, was feeble among them, you didn't mind jumping on him, he's going to be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come after Jerusalem. It's going to turn over, turn around on you. There was a day on earth. It was marked on the calendar. It was a literal month, a literal day, a literal hour. It was a literal time in a literal, literal place when Jesus, the eternal Son of God, stood in front of the, uh, the, the desk uh, of the magistrate Pilate. And Pilate said, don't you know I have power over your life? Jesus said, be careful. No man can have any power over me except God give it to him. And dear friend, that which God gives to the man, at one time, he may take away from him after the man has proven himself to be ungodly. After he has proven himself to despise government. After he has proven himself to be one who would trample and trample and stomp on another man because of envy. The, the Roman uh, council said, I know that for envy they have delivered you. I can't find any fault in you. It's just they're envious of you. They want me to kill you because they're envious of you. Dear soul, dear soul, your envy will get you in a lot of trouble in going after a man of God when God has caused him to stumble for God's glory. Mm. So that's who Edom was. That's what was going on. And in Obadiah again, Obadiah, verse 10, And thy mighty men, O Teman, 
shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Yes, Edom, you came after Israel. And you're going to be surprised at the indictments God lists uh, against them in the book of Obadiah. I have listed seven things that they did that God remembered, and he lists them out explicitly, exactly. The, the, the indictments against them are clearly laid out in Obadiah. So you, you found it uh, right, you know, this is my shot. I'm going to take my opportunity now to bring him down. And he says uh, in verse 10, I read you verse 9. This is verse 10. Obadiah, t verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off. How long? Forever. This thing has eternal consequences. Shall be cut off forever. Why is God going to come after Edom? Why is he going to honor the prayers of, of those in Babylonian captivity whose harps were hung on the willows? Remember, O Lord, Edom. Remember Edom, O Lord. Why is God going to do that? For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast one of them. God forbade Israel to do anything against the Edomites in Deuteronomy 23. We, we saw that. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 7. Don't raise your hand against the Edomites, for they are your brother. That will be considered to be a sin by God. But he forgot to tell the Edomites not to raise their hand against Israel, who was their brother. Not spiritually brother, but Esau and uh, Jacob were brothers physically. But when Esau... Edom saw the Babylonians attacking Israel. He said, you cast your lot upon Jerusalem, and thou wast even as one of them. Now I don't see you anymore as Edomites. I see you as the Assyrians and the Babylonians. You're one in the same spirit and the same mind. So the same mind and same spirit of God is going to come down against you can you find lamentations if you can find jeremiah the next book is the lamentings of jeremiah the lamentations chapter four lamentations chapter four and verse number 21 rejoice and be glad o daughter of edom this is Lamentations 4, 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. God told Jeremiah, I want you to take this cup. It's a cup of insanity. I want you to pass it among the nations. Don't leave any of them out. But I especially want you to give it to Edom. They're going to go crazy tearing off their clothes in their insanity and I'm going to bring them to shame and I'm going to bring them to nothing. Just about a mile up the road, there's a piece of property that this church, when we first started meeting back in 1975, was given to us. And then the man took it back. 
We were all excited about it. We got some land to build us a building on. He took it back. And he turned against us. They caught that man running down this road, tearing his clothes off, absolutely going out of his mind. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. It's not a drunkenness like a man drinking alcohol. It's a drunkenness like a man drinking down rebellion against God. And he literally, physically made himself naked. And then here, less than a mile away, that was only one acre that the man was going to give us. We're sitting on almost nine acres now that God was so gracious as to allow us to buy from a dear sister who wanted us to have a place. She's with the Lord now. But she wanted to make sure we had a place. And she let us pay for, uh, pay this for this land uh, in a, a little each month until we got it paid off. God is so good. But dear soul, those who afflict you in the present time, you need to stand still and not require evil for evil. Turn all the cheeks you can turn. Be kind, return good for evil, and be patient and wait on the Lord. Because God said, I remember. I remember Amalekites. I remember the Edomites. I remember their heart. I remember the Assyrians, that they didn't do it because they were doing it for me. They did it because they wanted to be rulers of the world. And they exacted more punishment on them than I would have wanted them to. So I'm going to come and deal with them. And that's why they say, God, remember Edom. That's the way that it is. Look at Malachi. The book of Malachi. Chapter number one. The last book in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, wherewith hast thou loved us? And the Lord answers, was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. I know you're involved closely it may be in your natural birth, Jacob and Esau having the same parents. But I loved you. Wasn't Esau your brother? Why is he saying that? Read the next one. And I hated Esau. Now, modern day Harlot Church wants to redo that phrase and say, I loved Esau less than I did Jacob. That ain't what it says. It says, I hated Esau. I loved Jacob. You better quit trying to uh, form God's words for him. You don't need to justify God. We're the ones that needs justification, not God. If God says, I hated Esau, then you better mark her down. I don't know why. God can't do wrong. He is perfectly holy. He hated Esau. I loved Jacob and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons and the wilderness. Listen at verse 4. Whereas Edom, the Edomites, remember Edom, Lord, and that's Esau, Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will remember, or excuse me, but we will return and build the desolate places. We may be in a bad place right now, but we're going to come back and build a bigger uh, place than we ever had. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, they will be able to build. Those people over in Genesis, what is it, chapter 9, built a tower and a, and a, 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 a a, a tower and a city. He, he said, they will build. They were able to do it, but I will throw down. As soon as they get it built up, I'm going to throw it back down. 
and they shall call them the border of wickedness. What's that over there? That's the border of wickedness. Well, who is that? That's the Edomites that God threw down. Every time they built up, God threw it back down, tore it back down. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. They cannot be saved. They will never, ever know redemption. They have proven themselves to be not just the enemies of Israel, but the enemies of God himself. And God said, I will remember Edom. And your, I'm reading Malachi 1.5. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. The border of Edom will be the border of wickedness, but Israel will be redeemed and magnified from their borders. That's what God said. Ezekiel had something to say about this. Ezekiel chapter 25. Ezekiel chapter 25. Why does it say in Psalm 137 and verse 7, Remember Edom, O Lord, because this was a circumstance from way back when although God told Israel to be careful with Edom, don't mess with them and don't, they're your brothers. Be kind one to another. Be gracious to them. But then the Edomites turned and slew the Israelites along with the Babylonians. And God said, that did it. And he cast them off. Ezekiel 25 and verse 12. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dwelt, I'll get it right in a minute, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them, therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom, and I will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Teman, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. Their cities are going to be brought down. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. You remember when he said that the, uh, the, the, um, the Israelite, no, I'll get it, the Assyrian was the rod of mine anger, the rod of mine indignation. He said, now Israel is going to be the rod of my vengeance against Edom. I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger. Psalm 137 verse 7 was not Israel's anger. It was God's anger. They prayed for God to remember them because God would be asked. Ask and you shall uh, receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask of me and I'll give it to you. So God put it on their hearts to pray for this in their bondage in, 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 uh, in Babylon, by the rivers of Babylon. And God said, I'm going to do it because it's me that's wanting to do it. It's not just these people uh, wanting some kind of sinful retri ret retribution. Ezekiel 25, 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Be sure your sins will find you out. Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. God is remembering right now your sins when you came against his man and his people. It's in his mind. And what's going to happen to you is not going to be their fury and their anger and their vengeance. It's going to be God does it and he shall bring you to shame. God have mercy. God have mercy. Jeremiah 49. Jeremiah 49. 
and verse number 7. Jeremiah 49 and verse 7. Concerning Edom, first two words. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Teman, one of their cities? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, one of their other cities. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him the time that I will visit him. If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? When they gathered up the grapes, they leave some of the stuff in the corners so that the, uh, the homeless and the poor can come by and, and help themselves with the grapes that are left after the harvest. If these by night, they will destroy till they have enough. They will destroy until, well, they say, we got enough, we can't carry no more, let's get out of here. But they leave some. He said, but, verse 10, Ezekiel 20, excuse me, Jeremiah 49, 10, but I have made Esau bare. Grape gatherers didn't gather all the grapes, but I am not going to leave anything left in Esau in Edom. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered her secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. That's what God said about them. Verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Jeremiah 25. He said, you think you're going to get by with it? You think you're going to hide? You think because you have played religion and you're highly thought of in religious circles, you're going to get by with it? God said, no, I know where you are. Jeremiah 25 and verse 29. We need to remember this. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. And should ye be utterly unpunished? Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Peter said, I think it's 1 Peter 4, 17. Judgment must begin at the house of God. But if God begins to judge the righteous... Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You start taking your opportunity to afflict God's church while God is afflicting them for their good and is afflicting them for their sanctification. And you do it because you're envious of them and you want to have what they got. God said, I won't forget you. I'll remember you and I will come back and there won't be a grape left on your vines. I will make you bear." That's very serious, folks. Matthew chapter 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 18. Verse 3. Matthew 18, 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be convert, converted and become as little children. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He's greater than John the Baptist. Jesus said, at this time there's no man, John the Baptist is the greatest man in the kingdom of heaven, but, uh, but he that is uh, born again, a little child, shall be greater than he. And whosoever will receive such Receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whosoever, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For, for it must needs be that offenses come. 
but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Church, God as a faithful parent, he chastises us. What child, what father is that that doesn't chastise his children? That's how we know that we are the children of God. And he says, he chastises us so that we will know that we're not bastards, but true children of God. What child is there that the father doth not chastise? But dear soul, be careful when that child is sniveling in the corner and sucking his lip because the father has, has whipped him to, uh, to make him a better saint of God. Don't you get in on it. Get you in worse trouble than what you can imagine. Second Peter chapter 3. Excuse me. Second Peter chapter two. It says in verse three, Second Peter two and verse three, and through covetousness shall they with molded cunning and false words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. The judgment has been hanging on and has been lingering for a long time. And their damnation slumbereth not. Be careful that you don't, verse 2, follow their pernicious or destructive ways. You be careful that they're, they're not able to lure you away from the government that God has set up. They despise government. We read that. But be careful if the, that they don't, with their arguments and their cunning, draw you away into that. He says, because their covet through covetousness, their cunning and false words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Verse 17, 2 Peter 2 and verse 17. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. You're sitting in the waiting room of a, of a restaurant. You done went up to the desk and give them your name. Somebody else comes marching in. They let them go right on in, and they let them have a table. You go up and say, hey. I've been sitting here for 30 minutes. That guy just come walking in, go right straight, and you serve him. He said he had a reservation. There are some wicked people that God will allow to be brought to the place of their present final judgment. But God said they had a reservation for that. Their reservation. is going to deliver them to the midst of darkness forever. Be careful. Be careful. Listen. Genesis 27 and verse 41. Genesis 27 and 41. You need to hear this. Genesis 27, 41. And Esau hated Jacob. Now Malachi, let's that the other way around. God hated Esau, but God loved Jacob. So here Esau is out of the will of God because he needs to be hating himself. God hated Esau, but Esau hates Jacob. Esau hated Jacob. Why? Because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Envy. I want what he wants. I want what he's got. But you don't want to have to live the way he lived. Listen. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said, where? In his heart. The days of mourning for my father are at hand. 
Then will I slay my brother Jacob. I'm waiting my opportunity. We are mourning over our father uh, Isaac uh, now. And as soon as the days of mourning are over for him, I'm going to kill Jacob. Murder's in his heart. You know that no murder has any place in the kingdom of God. That's what it says. So in Deuteronomy chapter 2, Deuteronomy chapter 2, it won't hurt us to read some scriptures, will it? Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 4. And command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore meddle not with them. Listen, do not return evil for evil. You're going to pass through their land and you are so formidable a host having gotten out of Egypt by the mighty power and works and miracles of God. These Edomites are going to be afraid of you. But don't mess with their land. For I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. I've given it to him. Now, when he comes and turns and turns evil and comes after you with the Babylonians and commingles his forces with the Babylonians, then I am going to remember them and come and wipe them off the face of the earth. They shall be stripping themselves naked in their madness as they drink the cup of God's wrath for all the nations. But until then, leave them alone. Return not evil for evil. Now, let's go back to our book of Obadiah. I really haven't yet and neither can I give this book as much attention as it needs. So I would encourage you, Bible believer, those of you that search the scriptures, it's just 21 verses. Read this, not just once. Read it several times. Let there be a time of it cooling off and waiting until you can pick it up and read it again so your mind will be fresh with it and you'll see things that you didn't see at the beginning. Now, consider the charges. In Obadiah, we begin with verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, talking to Edom, you stood on the other side. You was against Israel. In that day that the strangers, the Babylonians, carried away captive Israel's forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou wast as one of them. What did they do? Number one, thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. You shouldn't have just stood there and looked at it. It should be a horrible thing to you. You should have turned away your head from it and your eyes from it and not give credence to it by even looking upon it. Number two, neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of, Is of Judah in the day of their destruction. Not only did your eyes look upon it as if it were something that you know, you really wanted to see. And they talk about this video went viral. Well, this look here went viral. All I'm wondering, well, what's happening? Oh, I can't look at that. That's God's people. No, they didn't say that. They were glad to look upon it. But in their hearts, there was something different. They rejoiced over the children of, of Judah in the day of their destruction. They were happy to see it. 
Number three, this is Obadiah verse 12. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Oh, look at there. I knew that old boy. You know, he thought he was so great. Uh, he had so much money. He had so much land. He had so many oxen. Uh, he had a barn full of produce. And, you know, I'm glad to see him brought down. Just so be careful with what judgment you judge. It shall be measured to you again. This is an indictment against these people for doing these things. The fourth thing, verse 13. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Y'all, come on. The Babylonians have routed them all out of the city. Let's go in here and steal everything we can. Man, we ain't supposed to go into the gate of Jerusalem. That's the holy city. It's so beautiful for situation. The city of the great king. And you're just going to go in here and plunder it? Well, you know, we ain't going to ever have a better chance. It tears me up to see after the, uh, after the riots and so forth, people busting store windows and looting, carrying off everything they can carry. Be careful, dear soul. Don't enter into that. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Number five. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity. Number six. Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Number seven, verse 14. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Come on, you know there's a a crossroads up here and you know those Jews they're going to try to get out away from the Babylonians let's go up here and keep them from escaping we know this country as, as well as they do and we'll go up here and we'll sound the alarm and say Babylonians here they are over here trying to escape and Edomites helped prevent those that might have escaped from Babylonian captivity from doing so they went to the crossroads went to the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Verse number 8, Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Well, there's some in here in hiding, all too willing to point out those that the Edomites are just grieving that they might escape punishment. They want them to be hurt so bad that they will side against Jacob. As the descendants of Esau, they will side against Jacob for the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the heathen. And God said, I'm going to remember you. And that's what Psalm 137 in verse 7 says. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. They were agging the Babylonians on. you leaving something? Tear it on down. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Edom came to be just a daughter of Babylon. They were just like the rest of them. If you will notice that in God's uh, separation, the king comes with his angels and sits upon his father's throne, and he separates the nations one from another. Puts the sheep nations on one hand and the goat nations on the other. And there are not several Groups of people, well, these are Babylonians, they were worse. But these Edomites, you know, they're kind of kin to Jacob. So let's make a subsection of them and not put them in with the goats. Uh-uh. No, there's only two, sheep or goats. That's it. And God said, you Edomites, even though you had opportunity and started out under Abraham and Isaac, and you were the brother to Jacob, you're going to wind up as me looking at you as nothing but Babylonians 
made to be taken and destroyed and to cast into the bottomless pit made for the devil and his angels. There ain't going to be no good rebels in hell. It's awful. I pray for you. I ask God to have mercy on you. But you see, dear soul, it's not the affliction you are afflicting upon God's people only, but it's what we read you at the beginning of message number three. Jesus said, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. I'm sorry for you. I can't help you. I pray for you, but I can't, I can't release you from that judgment that is reserved for you because you did it unto him. And therefore, it shall not ever be forgiven you. Psalm 105, Psalm 105, in verse 13. Psalm 105 and verse 13. We've quoted this several times already. When thou went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. It doesn't matter that they went from one kingdom to another. It doesn't matter that they had the afflictions of uh, Jacob upon them. It doesn't matter that they were in the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. It didn't matter that there were times when there was, th that the wheat looked more like tares than they did like wheat. It didn't matter that God brought them down and brought them into deep depression and hanging their harps on willow trees and taking them away from their temple and from their sacrifices and from their land, they were still God's people. That was done to them because they are God's people and not to give you opportunity to say they're not God's people. Let's get them. Raise it. Raise it to the ground. God said, oh, no. No. You did all these things in Obadiah. I said seven, but there's actually, we read eight. Eight charges against them from verse 12 all the way down through verse 14. Verse 15 of Obadiah. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. In the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord has spoken it. I can't imagine cold weather right now. It's been so hot. But when cold weather is here and I want to start a fire in my old wood stove, I take what they might call stubble. Just Maybe even wadded up paper. And then little slivers of wood. Kindling. Kindling. And, and put that down first. Then you strike the match and, and set the paper on fire. And then it fires up the kindling. And then the wood's on top of that and it begins to burn. God said, I'm going to make Esau stubble. It lights up first. It lights up quick. It lights up easy. And God said, Jacob and Joseph shall be a fire and a flame, and it shall devour them, for the Lord hath spoken it. 
And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead, and the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. Now listen. And the saviors... The deliverers, those men who were elders, shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Dear soul, I know who started this, because he said, I am Alpha. And therefore, I know who's going to end this. It ain't going to be your bunch or my bunch. It's not going to be this group or that group or this denomination or that denomination or this political party or that political party. It's going to be Jesus Christ. You better be careful who you go against as being careful for those who belong to the Lord because he takes it personally and he will remember Edom. God have mercy on you. God bless you. I pray for you. I trust that repentance will be granted and that we'll be able to come to God and remember that the pandemic of virus is not the issue. It's the pandemic of sin and rebellion against God. That's the issue. God bless you.